if you have your Bible just I'm, we're gonna go and read the first few verses from the first book the first chapter and first few verses and this is easy because you don't have to really go anywhere just go from the beginning and so chapter 1 verse 1 and most likely most of you have read these verses because if you ever start to read the Bible that's where you start and that's not probably where you finish <laughs> maybe a few more chapters and that's where people stop and so we're just going to go ahead and read this in the beginning God so those of you who are wondering how did everything start God in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters then God said let there be light and there was light I want you to notice a lot of theologians they agree that the first verse says that God made the earth and the heavens and everything was good but between the first verse and the verse 2 that Satan came and destroyed everything and that's why we have the earth without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep because we know that God didn't create darkness and mess and all of this stuff we don't know exactly how all of that happened but what we do know is this God made the heavens and the earth and when everything was chaotic God's spirit was hovering over the face of the waters and then God started the the whole process declaring this word let there be light amen and so tonight we want to take a moment and continue of what we talked about last week those of you who were last week and those of you who were not you can check on podcast we were talking about the Holy Spirit and how Holy Spirit is a person Holy Spirit is God and Holy Spirit is amazing and he can be our friend and most importantly he can be our guide in life most people when they talk about Jesus they feel like he's so distant and far but the Holy Spirit is actually near and he came to live inside of us and he is on this earth. From this scripture I want us to learn a secret about God and secret about how the Holy Spirit works in every person's life. We see that from the beginning when everything was chaotic and everything was messy and everything was dark and everything was empty and everything was without form. God's Spirit was there but nothing was happening. Maybe your life today is just like the life of verse 2. No form means no convictions, no dreams, no goals in life. Your life is just like the life of an animal you just wake up eat and go back to sleep nothing else no form maybe it's void it's empty nothing on inside is fulfilling you you have a nice car you have a good looking body you have a good job you have everything and at the same time you have nothing now your religious beliefs is maybe God doesn't exist and everything but all of that doesn't make you fulfilled empty and maybe like the third part of the verse 2 is it's darkness there maybe you cry yourself to sleep and maybe your life is overwhelmed with just this deep sadness and deep depression I have a news for you today you're not crossed off of the list of God the Holy Spirit does not keep a restraining order from you the Holy Spirit actually is closer to you than you can imagine he's actually circling around you like an airplane and he's not leaving your side because he cares about you and he doesn't just want to be near you as you are in your mess he wants to turn your mess into a message turn you turn you from a zero to a hero turn your scars into stars and turn your hurt into his healing turn your pain into his purpose he wants to change your life and I'm going to share with you tonight how he can do that it's actually very simple on the first day God the Father did not make anything tangible no trees no animals no humans no Sun or the moon on the first day God made light now when you hear that you immediately think God made the Sun the moon the stars but you will be surprised to read the first chapter and find out that the moon, the sun and the stars were made on the day four. The light was made on the first day. The sun, moon and the stars were made on fourth. 
before God will bring the sun the moon and the stars in your life before God will bring a miracle in your life before God will bring something amazing that you're expecting of him you have to let him start on day one and day one is this you must understand as a person who is a believer in God or maybe not even a believer in God you have to know this about God God is light he lives in the light and he only works in the light somebody say God is light say he lives in the light and he works only in the light God does not work in the dark so when God made light on the first day he was teaching us something how he works that anytime he wants to do something in your life he does not start with doing something in your life he starts with preparing a station a workstation which will allow him to do something in your life what is that workstation light God does not like dark he doesn't like dark so bad that in heaven he does not allow one dark corner one shadow and he did not even allow a night in heaven God is so full of light and likes light so bad that he put all of the dark in hell and said me and darkness have nothing in common I am full of light and so anytime you want God to get involved in your life in your relationships in your health in your finances in your school and in your future with your friends and family you must understand this God you want whose help he is light he lives in the light and only works in the light uh, I'm currently building a house and the guys who were putting sheetrock in my house they came in and they said from the beginning after they put the sheetrock and they were supposed to tape it and I remember they came in and they said we can't tape anything in this house for one simple reason it's not hot enough you have to create a warm house so for us to do taping you know and I could have said to them well guys I can bring you some McDonald's I can bring you some Starbucks I come on guys I can bring you I can bring you so many things but these guys could not operate in the house without one condition it had to have a certain atmosphere and so is with God when God made light on the first day what he was telling us is this is that for me to begin to do something on this earth I have to bring my workstation on this earth and set it here which was light the same way Jesus worked every miracle he would come to one house and there was a girl who was dead and they asked him could you heal this resurrect this girl from the dead and Jesus would come in and the Bible says the whole house was crying and weeping and whining and and just mourning and just negative it was dark it was depression sadness crying not tears of joy but tears of unbelief and the Bible says Jesus couldn't do any miracle there until first he took everybody out of the house turned on the light an atmosphere of faith an atmosphere of positivity an atmosphere of victory and then the Bible says he spoke to the girl and the girl came back to life and he did a miracle in one place he came where people were educated and religious it was his own hometown and the Bible says he stood up to do miracles but did not do many miracles for one reason it's because the light the atmosphere of faith and positivity the atmosphere that God is able Jesus is God Jesus is for us he's not against us. that atmosphere was gone it was pitch dark and Jesus God who can do anything couldn't do anything if you think that God Almighty is going to do a miracle in your life because he is Almighty you are wrong God is going to do a miracle in your life not because he is almighty but because you make room for his station in your life if there is no room for the day one there will be no day two no day three no day four no day five no day six and there sure be no day seven we all want to see God create a sun and a moon but God starts first bringing the light see for us there could be no light without the sun for God there could be no sun without the light God works completely opposite we say if you don't find a boyfriend you can be happy God says if I can make you happy you won't find a boyfriend 
See, you say, if I get that nice car, only then I will be truly at peace. And God says, if you find that peace, then I'll give you a nice car. God works completely opposite. You say that if God, if you give me a moon and the sun, only then I will have light. And God says, I will give you light and then I will give you the moon, the sun and the stars. God wants light not to come from the sun. He wants light come from him. He wants your joy, your peace and your contentment not to come from things and not to come from people and not to come from a job but to come from himself. For you to have light because you have God and you have his word and you have his Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? Light comes from the word not from the sun. God works completely opposite and for us to see his work in our life on a personal level we must embrace his way of working. God works just like this. He brings light and then he brings the sun. We want God to work the opposite. We pray for the sun. We hope for the sun. We ask for the sun. We make plans for the sun so that we can have light. And God says, I will give you light first and then I will give you the sun. For example, maybe you're single today and you are in that stage where you're single ready to mingle there's nobody to mingle with and maybe you're discouraged a bit maybe you're coming even to church and you're saying man I'm, I'm in that state right now where I would really love somebody to love me for who I am and you're walking around maybe there's darkness in your soul you're crying you're upset you're not happy with yourself you're looking at yourself and you say man poor little me I'm so ugly I wish somebody could love me what you're asking God is to give you a sun to give you a moon and the stars let me tell you how the Lord wants to bring that star and the moon and the sun in your life. He wants to make you feel so loved and accepted on day one and bring that which you desire on day four. You want God to bring that on day one so that you will have the light on day four. God works the opposite. That's how Holy Spirit works. He first brings you peace inside peace you can't explain. You walk into your apartment, you walk into your house, everything is the same. Your paycheck is the same, the bills are the same, everything in the family is the same. There's still fighting, there's still this, this disarray and disagreements but on inside of you something is there that was not there before. You shouldn't feel so peaceful when nothing is peaceful around you but you do. That is a day one. That means day two is coming, day three is coming, day four is coming, Day five is coming, day six and day seven is when you're gonna be at rest. Don't think day one starts with God doing something around you. Day one starts with God doing something within you. And if you have the light, it's a guarantee the sun is coming. If you have the peace, it's a guarantee the change is coming. If you have the contentment and satisfaction, it's a guarantee. God's blessing, God's success, God's promotion is coming. But if you on inside are empty, if you on inside are still insecure, if you on inside is still shattered and broken, day one is today your day. The day where God will bring his light, his love, his peace. So that when the sun comes, you will look at the sun and say, thank you for the sunshine. But I've already been enjoying it from the day one, from my creator, from my God. And then the son doesn't become your God, God becomes your God. Can somebody say amen? amen. We're going to write, we're just going to remember four simple thoughts. If you can bring up the first thought and come to prayer. I cannot have miracles in my life if I have chaos in my mind. I can't have miracles in my life if I have chaos in my mind. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says the following that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Most people believe this myth. The reason why my mind and my heart is so negative and is full of doubt, full of insecurity, full of hurt and full of pain is because my life has been difficult. And if you will tell someone your life story of what you've been through, all the hurts, all the rejection, all the abuse, all the betrayal you went through and then you will share how negative you are a typical person will say makes sense because you are convinced and so am I at times the reason why my mind is so negative and full of defeat is because my life is in a chaos God said it's the other way around 
See we are convinced it's because of what I've been through that's exactly why I am the way I am and we use our past as an excuse to justify the mess and the chaos in our head and in our heart and by no respect do I mean no sympathy to the things that we went through in our life every ship goes through boisterous waters every single day but the reason why they survive is because the waters do not go inside of them it is a choice to have a negative mind it does not happen by chance it is a choice and the first myth you have to break is this I cannot be positive I cannot be at peace I cannot be filled with God's light why because my life is in the chaos and if God wants me to walk with this spring in my step if God wants me to have this God confidence if God wants me to believe in him in me if God wants me to do that he needs to change my life it means he needs to bring a son in my life and God says if you want a son allow me to change you on the inside first the way God works he doesn't change your life first he changes your mind first if he changes your life without changing your mind it's a matter of time where life will line up to the level of our mind can somebody say amen the Bible says in Proverbs 23 7 for as a man thinks in his heart so is he it's interesting that it doesn't say as a man is so he thinks in his heart the bible doesn't say as man's finances as man's relationships as man's life is so he thinks in his heart the bible says actually it's the opposite as he thinks in himself so is his life my friends it's the other way around where your mind goes your life will follow say where my mind goes so where my mind goes my life will follow say my mind is the workshop for the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen so do not excuse yourself and simply say well it's just been my life has been hard God can understand that's one of the reasons why I allow all of these things to come inside that is not how it works number two I can't change my mind if I don't control my thoughts. I can't change my mind if I don't control my thoughts. The first misconception is what we mentioned. Most people excuse the negativity and defeat in their heart because their life has been tough and rough. That is the first excuse. The second excuse is when you begin to believe the truth that you know what yes I am negative yes you know what I am full of negativity I am full of pessimism yes I am full of insecurity yes I I am full of that sin inside of me but usually this is the answer they will follow with but I can't change it and that is actually somewhat true you can't change your mind if you don't control your thoughts to some degree it is true this is what the truth is you can't change your mind because a mind is a mindset that is a result of millions of thoughts thought for decades and that's why it's called mind set different thoughts you allowed in they form your mind set and it took 20 25 27 years to do that and here you heard a message that you need to change your mind so you're going into a building you've built in 25 years and trying to demolish it in five minutes what's going to happen nothing and so you're going to walk out with the same result i can't change it those negative thoughts come faster than flying in that i can fly them out and the moment i kill one they get another one gets resurrected from the dead i cannot change my mind you're right but you can control one thought and the reason why your mind is at where it's at is because you didn't control your thoughts you thought God's supposed to do that I do not like airport security for a few reasons because they always make me remove my belt my shoes and many other things and after a while I learned there's a pre-check the um, TSA pre 
which is something you pay 90 bucks for for five years and you don't have to remove none of that and you go through a complete completely different lane but no matter whether you have TSA pre or you don't have TSA pre when you come into the land of United States from another country you are going to be met with the border patrol you are going to simply be met with people who will ask you for your passport they will check your passport with their data and they will only let you in if you have a passport or you have a visa now our country is very precious our country is very important but our country is not as vital as your mind that you have inside of your head what would happen if the United States of America would have treated the visitors that come here the way you treat the thoughts that come into your head we would have no America can you imagine every terrorist that has a bazooka can walk in easily without you asking for a passport can you imagine every Al-Qaeda agent walking in with a bomb without you asking for an ID well he's coming he loves the country he must have some good intentions most of us we are like those patrols standing there asleep let any thought that comes in come in and there are guys terrorists walk into our head and we let them come in you come you come and then we look at our life it's going up in flames you're like why didn't God do anything he put you in charge of the thoughts that go in through your head it's not his fault that you let the devil bribe your mind and he let anything he wants to bring into your head he brings into your head my challenge today is fire the gatekeeper put a new guy in charge and teach him the rules to check the papers check the passport check his visa and check make sure every thought that comes into your head lines up with the director's data list the bible and if it doesn't line up you say homie g cracker you gotta go back where you came from but you cannot come into this country can somebody say amen can somebody say amen, amen. give your mind the same respect our government gives to this country guard your thoughts when something comes into your head especially when something negative happens at work especially when something negative happens and the thoughts oh they come in like little terrorists but they look so good they, they bring brownies they bring your favorite coffee and they want to manipulate you so you won't check their documents with the documents in the data you have to be careful you cannot change your mind you're right if you don't change your thoughts you have to be convinced of one thing you can control your thoughts otherwise the Bible wouldn't ask us to meditate on God's Word day and night otherwise the Bible wouldn't ask us in Philippians to say think on these things otherwise the Bible wouldn't say in Joshua 1 8 it wouldn't say to us to meditate on the Word of God day and night if thoughts is something that control you you are a mess can you imagine if America would say we cannot control who comes to America they control us ridiculous that's not how this works you are the captain of your ship you are responsible for your thoughts and if you choose whatever thoughts come inside here they will choose whatever mind you will have and whatever mind you will have will determine the kind of life you will enjoy can somebody say amen let's go to number three positive thoughts are not going to stay without assistance negative thoughts are not going to leave without resistance can somebody say amen? Say positive thoughts will not stay without my assistance. Negative thoughts will not leave without my resistance. So the first method, the first myth we overthrew is the fact that the reason why I'm negative is because my life sucks. That's not true. The second myth that we overcome is the fact I can't control my mind. It is true to some degree, but you can change your thoughts. If you ever start to work on your thoughts and begin to understand the Holy Spirit works by bringing light into my mind means bringing positivity, bringing faith, bringing love, bringing goodness first and you begin to pay attention you will find out this true, this will be so true. You will find out the positive thoughts are not sticking around. They don't like you. It seems like they constantly on the go they come in it's like you came in and you left that and the moment you look aside that thought is gone and the negative thought it's like the person that you have in your life who comes without invitation and will not leave until you show him the door it won't leave without your resistance Jesus made it very clear in Matthew chapter 13 
he said I am a sower and I sow the seed the seed is his word you must understand the word is a thought clothed in vocabulary a word is a thought clothed in vocabulary when Jesus is saying I sow my word what he's saying is I am sowing my thoughts what I think about you into into your soil he said and this seed this thoughts some will immediately be taken by the birds some will die on the path some will be uh, will be destroyed by the weeds and all of these things and some will grow from the beginning he made it very clear good thoughts don't stay in the ground automatically they need to be assisted they need to be watered and they need to be nurtured bad thoughts will stay inside of you without any assistance if you think that God is going to take away all the negativity all the insecurity if you think that God is going to remove all of those things that are not good inside of you by coming to a prayer or by praying a simple prayer and you have to do nothing you will be surprised to find God never answering your prayer in that particular matter because thoughts is something you have to also work with with the Holy Spirit you have to work with him can somebody say amen and so good thoughts they don't stay without our resistance and bad thoughts they will not leave without our resistance and let's share one more thing and we are going to come to prayer if you love the dark you will reject the light John 3 19 says the following and I will read and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness more than light because their deeds were evil what this means is this is as a person who knows that God is light somebody say God is light say God lives in the light and God works in the light God works in those people first bringing light and victory inside of them first and as they receive that inside of them something begins to happen they as a result see their life change Jesus is saying in John chapter 3 he says this is the whole problem the light comes but people love the dark so much that they were willing to part with the light now an average person who will read this will say why would anybody not like positivity why would anybody reject Jesus with his good offer until you had an experience in your life where you were asleep you were running on your sixth hour of sleep at 6 30 in the morning and one of your siblings runs into your room with an excitement in their voice turns on the light what was your first reaction did you respond shouting good morning or did your first words were turn off those lights and disappear you were not happy to see the light when you slept for six hours not because you don't like the light it's just your eyes have been so used to the dark that light hurts them I know people who have been so negative that to think a positive thought hurts them people who have been so abused that when somebody truly loves them they feel like they are gonna hurt them when you've been in the dark for so long light hurts your eyes and at that moment you have to choose to adjust slowly but surely but not to scream turn off the lights don't fall in love with the dark even if you've been in it for 20 years don't fall in love with negativity defeat hurt abuse pain depression crying weeping complaining and mourning even if that's what's been your lifestyle for the past 30 years why because when Jesus comes with the light it's only his workstation to bring miracles in your life and when you say God get away with your light you're saying God get away with your miracles get away with your healing get away with your freedom get away with your victory get away with your breakthrough I don't want none of that when you turn off the lights you turn off day two you turn off day three you turn off day four five and six and seven of God's miracles in your life you may use to the dark but hate it hate the dark you might have grown up to be a victim inside because of the things you've been through you may be like the Jewish people who've been beaten all their life and the only thing they knew is a master screaming at the top of their lungs work faster work better 
and here is God comes gets them out and their life is so much better but on inside nothing changes and then inside there is still the victim and inside there is still negativity because the first bad thing that happened they said God left us God doesn't care about us God is not for us where is he why is he not giving us this and that because a victim mentality is not dying fast and all of that 40 years they held on to that victim inside and every time something bad happened and God came in and says listen let go of that inside I got you out of Egypt help me to get Egypt inside out of you so I can bring you into a day two day three day four day five and day six but Israel loved the dark they loved the complaining they love the negativity. They love the pessimism. They love that victim part of them because it helped them to be familiar with their past. And they turned off the light and something happened. You know what happened? Nothing happened. They died. Was it God's will? No. Couldn't God just override their negativity? No. Even if you are in the dark and you're wrestling with it, wrestle with it. But don't embrace it. Don't say this bed is too comfortable and this dark is too familiar. Say no, it hurts my eyes. But I want what the light is going to bring. Can somebody say amen? I want to declare over some of your life today. Day one has started in your life. God is bringing positivity, God is bringing victory and God is bringing change in your life in Jesus name. God is going to wipe away every tear from your eyes and God is going to fill your heart with joy. God is going to fill your heart with peace and God is going to fill your life inside with such a victory inside but nothing on the outside will be changing yet. But then there will be day two, then there will be day three, and then there will be day four, and day five, and day six for the glory of God. Can somebody say amen? I remember hearing this person who was a man of God, but he, he had a vision and inside of him, God gave him this picture that he is going to be a millionaire. But he was broke. He didn't have even five dollars to his name. His business was not going, he had no business. But he was convinced inside, God is going to make me a millionaire. It became so real inside of him that he took five dollars and after five he added five more zeros on the five dollars so it would look like five hundred thousand dollars he walked around everywhere convinced he was a millionaire his wife would ask him say hey honey can you give us 50 bucks so we can go buy shoes he said he said hey I cannot I cannot break the fifty thousand dollars and he would pull fifty thousand dollars five dollars with five more zeros and he says, I just can't break it. That's all I have. It's just half a million dollars. He lived with that for years. And he wasn't crazy. He wasn't just mental problem. It's just on inside, he had light before the sun came. One day he was driving and it hit him so strong and it came from the inside. I am a millionaire. Three months later, he made his first million. It's as simple as that. Maybe you're addicted to something. Maybe you're struggling with something right now and you want God to give you the miracle. I'm showing you today how God works. He first gives you the miracle inside. You may say, well, I don't want that. That's the only way it works. He wants to change things on the inside. The first step that it takes is receiving Jesus into your heart. The second step is when you receive Jesus is to receive the Holy Spirit who gives you that on inside. I know I've talked even to people from our church and other leaders who presented testimonies from our church of people who would cry at night every day, would come to the service and the Holy Spirit will touch them. They will go back to their apartment, to their house and cry no more. Something would come, a light would come people who wouldn't sleep at night and the light will come and they would be able to sleep people who would constantly be filled with intrusive thoughts that you're worthless but those thoughts would subside 
those who would have a family where there is abuse or maybe there is constant negative words or there is a drunken husband or misbehaving kids or even misbehaving parents but they would receive this peace that cannot be explained and they walk into that environment and it says it's crazy that I feel this light but everything is chaotic it's because you are on a day one day two is coming day three is coming day four is coming God will give you the sun he will give you the moon and he will give you the stars can somebody say amen same thing is happening even with our church the growth of our church it's happening inside of me when the first time we mentioned to our leaders we're not going to be seated on this side just two months ago the most people we had on our Wednesday was on this side and I've said that mentally we have to switch it that Wednesday night both sides are going to be filled and at first service there was just just few of us here three months later everything that we see here becomes here you have to allow the Holy Spirit to place in your mind a light everything will be okay he will provide for your needs he will help you he will bring the right person bring that first inside of your heart and then you will see that as a reality don't look for a man look for light don't look first for prosperity look for light out of the light God makes miracles devil does damages out of the dark God does miracles out of the light can somebody say amen can somebody say amen I was talking about you today God is beginning to work in your life and he will do great things in your life can somebody say amen and when the day one is done and there is no stars there is no moon there is no trees but you have light you know what how you can end that day it is good how can you say it is good when there is no stars if there was light that means there is God and if I have God I'll have everything else they do they too comes there is still no sun but the water divides from the soil and God at the end of the day everything is not done but God looks at it and God says it is good I want to teach some of you when God does something small like brings peace in your heart though there's chaos in your life learn to end your day before you go to sleep saying it is good and when something else shifts don't say oh it sucks say it is good why because the light of the world is here and he who started a work in me is faithful to finish it